what is it like? Uh, you run into to Anderson Silva during fight week. How, how has it changed? I mean, he seems he he always seemed very jovial. He 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 clearly is a guy who who loves what he does. But you do wonder, like, if you know all of those title defenses, the pressure started mounting up. Now it seems like he really is truly in a great spot. He looks loose. Have you noticed that at all? Is there any change in Anderson now than than maybe you know five years ago when he was defending the title over and over again? Um. Is there any change in him as far as his his abilities or his personality, you know, and his, his attitude toward fighting? Yeah, just his personality. And then, you know, even bringing up a separate point, when he fought um, when he fought Nick Diaz, you know, I remember the press conference that night. He was saying that, you know, maybe, maybe he would have to consider walking away, that he had to talk to his family. It just seems like now he's in a great spot. Like I said, he mentioned that he wants to continue fighting for six or seven years. It, it almost feels like he's found his second wind in some ways. I mean, I guess, have you picked that up at all being around him? Yeah, well, no, he talks about it all the time. He says, this is what I love to do. I love going into the gym and trying to, you know, I'm a martial artist. I love trying to be better than I was yesterday. And, you know, that that's his philosophy. And, and he loves to fight, man. It's just, I don't know. I think I think what you have to do in a, in a case like his is take it, you know, fight by fight. He's going to fight a young, really tough guy who hits hard, uh, has, has knockout power on both hands, has great wrestling. We're going to find out, you know, how good Anderson looks against this guy on Saturday night. And, and, and you take it on a fight by fight basis, you know? Yeah. 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 I don't mean to look too far ahead. I just hope that, um, you know, I hope that, that Anderson doesn't turn into one of those guys that just, he has to stick around, you know, and have, but, but but we know, I mean, that's, that's how this sport goes. It's a very, very difficult sport to walk away from. Um, Yeah. And especially you get these guys who, who love to fight, you know, that's why they're fan favorites. The guys who become the fan favorites are the guys who love to fight, you know, the Chuck Liddell's, the Anderson Silva's, and, and the list goes on and on, right? The yeah. Conor McGregor's. Um, and, and, and it's hard to walk away from that because they love it, and it's hard to walk away from the money. Yeah, Let's switch gears real quick and uh, look at a heavyweight title fight that uh, the UFC just recently announced in, uh, in May in Dallas. UFC 211 is going to be Stipe Miocic versus Junior Dos Santos, a rematch of a fight we saw in 2014, a great fight. I was there ringside. It was, I've said it before. It was just one of those fights where you couldn't you couldn't believe that it went five rounds. You're saying to to the people around you after the first round, well, well, this thing's going to end very quickly, and then went the whole the whole 25 minutes. How did you arrive at this one? Because I do think it it caught some people by surprise that you know Junior was able to sneak his way up uh, into a title fight right away. Um, sneak his way up. Who who, who do you think should have got the title fight before him? Well, you know, I just he had, he'd had some injury issues, and he's only one and one since that that win over Stipe. I think a lot of people were looking at Verdum, but you know, it, it, Verdum is as you mentioned at UFC 207 was declining some fights. Is that kind of what happened here? Is that Verdum yeah. was was sitting on the side, and, and Junior took yeah, an Verdum, opportunity? Yeah, Verdum was turning down fights we were offering him, and and um, you know, Ver, Verdum has never been never been uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? I don't I don't know. He, he he's tough to deal with. And he was turning down fights. Those, you know, Junior Dos Santos is ready to roll, wants to fight, and, and always is willing to fight. So he got the fight. Yeah. And then a report comes out of Brazil that, uh, you know, that's targeting uh, Verdum to fight Ben Rothwell on the same night uh, at UFC 211. Can you confirm that yet? Has that been a targeted fight, or is it still uh, in negotiations? Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know where that's at. It's true, but I don't know where that's at. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about another Brazilian, Jose Aldo, another guy we haven't seen for a little bit, and you know people are wondering where where he's at. It, it, this is a you know we're we're here at UFC 208 in Brooklyn, February 11th. I think everybody knows that it, it was you know a possibility that he was going to be fighting on this card. He's not. When are we going to see Jose Aldo again, and, and who's he going to be against? Uh, well, he's going to fight Max Holloway. That fight's done too. I don't. It's I, done. I don't remember what what date it's it's on for, but yeah, it's done. Wow. Is there anybody we can ask? Is, is there a way to get an answer to this question real quick? When, when's that thing no, going down? No, nobody around me here to tell me that, but it's, <laughs> it's a done deal. We got that fight done. Um, we got that fight done last week. Well, that's a fantastic fight. You know, Brett, I know it's, we're looking way ahead now. We don't even know what, what card this fight's going to take place on, but what do you think of that matchup? I like it. It's fun. That's a fun fight. Holloway has looked incredible um, you know, in his last few fights, and Jose Aldo is Jose Aldo. Last uh, last topic we'll bring up, of course, is uh, is, is Conor McGregor. You know, 
it seemed like you know he was doing his own thing in Manchester. He was he was making some cryptic comments about the UFC. You acknowledged them in Denver uh, around that card, and you know saying that if he wanted to try and move forward in any kind of promotion of a fight, it would be an epic fall for him. Or the words that you use. It sounds like you you two have spoken since then. Is that correct? Have you spoken to Connor? How how frequently? How recently? And what are those conversations like? Um. <laughs> We, we we haven't talked since then. Um, yeah, uh, we haven't talked. We we haven't talked since then. What can you tell us about the situation? It seems like we're 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 kind of you know left. I, I mean, I, I do this podcast every week, and and it seems like every week we're talking about you know what is what is Connor doing? What does this headline mean? What does that headline mean? How real is this Floyd Mayweather thing? You know, Dana White's offering them money to do it in the UFC now and promote the fight, or, or at least co-promote a boxing match. What is all of this? Can no, you break what it down? happened Can... was Floyd said that he had made offers and all this other stuff, and I said, no, he hasn't. Floyd hasn't made any offers. That's a, that's a crock of shit. And I said, here's a real offer. So I laid out the first offer. And then, and then how do you interpret what, what he said since? You know, and, and, and what Ooh. did your comment mean in Denver? What who said since? Well, it, when Connor during his interview said that... Uh, what, what, what do you mean, what do I, what do I mean by it? Come on know exactly what i mean by it yeah so you know, i guess you, you know what i mean you know exactly what i mean and you know exactly what was said and done and and and, and it is where it is right now you know he, he he came out and said i'll you know i can do this without them i guarantee you he can't do it without us and you know I, I, what i said was I've always been respectful of Connor and the things he wants to do and everything else. But if he wants to go down that road, it will be an epic fall. Mm -hmm. And and everybody knows exactly what that means. And I don't think I don't think anything else needs to be said. That's that's that that's that's it. Sure. Yeah. I I think. Last question I'll ask on on this topic is I think what, what what's on most people's minds is well um, why can't you you just talk about it to each other you know and and why does the, do you think that takes place do you think it's just is Connor difficult is are you too are you busy working on other stuff and and why why not if this situation is kind of out in the public why do you think you guys haven't talked about it personally There's nothing really to talk about there, There's nothing to talk about Connor McGregor is under contract with the UFC. And, um, you know, we, we will make him, he's out on maternity leave right now. And after his girl has the baby, we'll offer him another fight. I think that that is all the questions I got for you, except for, you know, one curveball here in the summer of 2016. So last summer you said, I promise you one day the Fertitas will own an NFL team. And you know, recently, there's been some developments with the Raiders in, in Las Vegas, and you know, there's been some money withdrawn, and, and it looks like they need some more funds coming from some kind of investor. And you know, Cowboy Cerrone's uh, quote came to mind: "If you're looking for a, guy, a football fan with a little bit of money to invest, uh, I know a guy. How close is Lorenzo Fertitta to owning an NFL team or, or getting involved in the NFL?" I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. They will absolutely, positively own a team someday. And uh, I, I, I just I don't know if they'd go in for a piece. I think if those guys are going to go in, they're going to go all in. Yeah. They, they they're not the the be a partner or silent partner kind of guys. They, they they would I think if if they went into a, the NFL they they'd go all the way. But I honestly don't know the answer to that. I, I mean if Lorenzo's out there making moves right now with the Raiders, which I don't believe he is, um, I don't know about it. He called, what's funny is last night I was here, he called me and I was in the shower and, um, and when I got out, I, 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 I hit him back and he texted me, I'm in this meeting. I'll call you as soon as I get out. I need to talk to you. And then I never talked to him again. Hmm. I mean, is, is that kind of, uh, uh, do you guys have those kind of conversations every day that I, Hey, I'm in a meeting. I'll call you back. Or is this gives you reason to think yeah, that he know, was in a kind of an important meeting? We, there? We, we talked three times a week. Yeah, it was, it was. It was weird that he was in a meeting and needed to talk to me about something, but I don't know. It couldn't have been too important or he would have called me back. Huh. Well, uh, I guess I'll check back with you on that on, on Saturday and see if you've heard back from Lorenzo. And uh, we'll be asking you a lot about, of course, what happens at UFC 208. Two really good, I think, main and co-main events. You know, this is one of those cards where I really, I don't know who's going to win either of those top two fights. You know, usually I think I have a, a prediction or an idea of the way the fight's going to go. I think both of those could really go 
either way. And those are, to me, those are the best fights to watch. So we're looking forward to UFC 208. It's in Brooklyn at Barclays Center. We appreciate uh, you stopping by the Five Rounds podcast. Take some time to talk about it. Thank you very much, Dana. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, buddy. Take care. All right. We'll see you. Bye.